Hey yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Tenyasin1 and welcome to yet another tutorial for the um, enemy AI series, I guess you can call it. Um, in the previous tutorial we basically covered patrolling for the AI. Um, in this one we are going to focus on attacking, so essentially we are going to reuse the code that we have for the weapon system for the player and we are going to adapt that on top of the AI so the AI can look at um, our character basically and it can follow it once it's in sight and it can um, shoot it basically that is about it check out my favorite account if you got some work for me and my patreon if you want to support me so without any further ado let's get started shall we Right, so back in Unity, um, we've got our cool little AI here, as you can see. Um, nothing much here, nothing too special. Uh, same guy we had before. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we are going to edit our script uh, to make it so that it can attack. So right now it can patrol, but follow and attack more or less does nothing. Uh, you can switch it to follow the state, but all it does is follows the player, and that's it. Uh, so let's get into the script uh, real quick here. And here you can see we've got a bunch of things so our main goal we have a few goals we want to check for the player as in we want to raycast and scene to see where the player is um if the raycast hits the player then we want to ignore the waypoints that we have in the map and follow the player instead because that's what takes priority right um if the player is not in sight then we keep following the waypoints uh, and that's it. And the moment we break sight from the player, we are going to basically give up. We're not really, we're not going to have a search state right now. But yeah. So check for player, follow the player. Uh, once you're close enough, attack the player. Uh, and also make sure that you're looking at the player when you're attacking it. You know? Anyways, uh, let's start by a few things then. So we need a few, couple of variables now. Um, essentially, we can just create a header and we can call that AI properties um, probably not the best naming and then we can create a new variable call it shoot distance so that's the maximum distance uh, more like that's yeah that's the maximum distance where we can shoot at the player so it's gonna be 10 meters in this case if we are like around the range of 10 meters in the range of 10 meters then we're gonna shoot the player otherwise we're just gonna ignore it uh, or, or we're just gonna more like follow it not, not, not ignore it but yeah and then there's another one which is going to be uh, the weapon which we're going to use and we're going to call this attack weapon. This is the weapon that we are going to essentially use to shoot at the player. Uh, that's the weapon that we assign the character, right? Uh, and another variable which um, you basically don't need to see this, but I, I guess we'll just make it just make it like uh, yeah, you don't need to see this variable. This is basically for the for the player itself, but yeah, uh, we can just make it private actually. Private bool in sight. So whether you know we're inside, whether we are able to see the player or not. Uh, this very cool is here to tell us. And lastly, we're going to have a direction to target. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can do it without it as well, but this is just to keep things more simple. So it is going to keep in mind, it's going to basically look at the target and it's going to find direction towards it. So make sure your target is assigned. Uh, there's no targeting system, so this only it's only compatible with one target at a time. All right, so we need a variable called max follow distance. This is basically the distance that it's going to follow us before it goes back to patrolling. Anyways, so let's start with uh, by creating a, a new method, and we're going to call this method um, checking f check for player, basically. So this is the method which is going to be used to see where the player is. So check for player. Uh, essentially, this method is going to be a very basic raycast uh, towards the player. And you're basically recasting all the time. You're checking, hey, is the player in my sight? Can I see the player? Um, and that's basically it. If you can do that, and if you're close enough to the player as well, not just like the recast, then we're going to basically follow it. So direction to target. So basically, we're going to find the direction towards the player so we can find where to you know, cast ray. Uh, and that's a very simple formula. Target position minus uh, transform to position. Uh, basically, we're just saying is... Our target, this is our target, and I'll so transform and we create an arrow towards the target. 
Maybe you'll have a cool little animation on the screen. I don't know. I, I really don't know how I'm going to edit this video. Um, and we have uh, some variables we're going to create for the raycasting itself. So let's do it. So physics.raycast transfer to positions. We're going to start the raycast from our current position and we're going to raycast towards the player. And we're also going to say normalized because otherwise uh, it can sort of mess up. Because we care about the direction, we don't actually care about how far the player is right now. We we're not we're not using the distance through this uh, um I guess I guess variable. We we do care about it, but not here, not at this point. Uh not at this point basically. So we're just gonna like cast a ray towards that direction, towards the player. And we are going to store that in a variable called hit info. And if the ray cast is successful and we manage to hit something, then basically it's like this. So insight is equal to hit info. Transform to compare tag. I'll, I'll clean this in a second. So, compare tag player. Now this means that if the the target that we just hit is, um, you know, the 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 tag of that target was player, meaning you know the the, the main player in the game, then inside is going to be true. So we're basically just checking. This is basically a, a little if statement, more or less, uh, and it's returning true or false, and we're just storing that in the inside variable. Uh, we have to check for player here. Uh, and that's about it. We're basically done for the check for player method now. Uh, let's move on to our follow method. Right. So in the follow method, basically, we only cared about target. Now we care more about that. We basically want to see, hey, um, if agent.remaining distance is less than equals to shoot distance. So if you are close enough to the player, more or less in 10 meters range, and the player is actually inside, so we can actually see the player. Um, then we're going to reset our path. The reason why we're doing this is so that we stop following the waypoints, because uh, we don't really care about the waypoints anymore. Well, we have the player in sight, and we're going to go follow the player. Pew, 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 you know, let's like go after that. And basically, we're going to switch states to attack. Um, so we were in the follow state, because as you can see, the follow state uh, has the method follow. Uh, now we're going to skip that, we're going to ignore that state, and we're going to move on to the attack state. Uh, but if we, you know, if the target is, is, is not in sight, basically, if we're not close enough to the target yet, then we're simply going to follow the target. All right. That only happens if you're in the follow state again. Um, but we'll get back to, the, to, to this as well. We'll see how this goes, right? Uh, basically, now in the attack one, all that's going to happen is, hey, you know, we have the player. Uh, so if... So we got in the attack state. If we were close enough, we were able to shoot the player. We got in the state, and we're gonna say, "Hey, if the player is not in sight, then we want to return back to our follow state." Cause so we just lost track of player. We don't know where he is. So we're gonna start following him instead, right? Um, but if he is, you know, if if say if say he was in sight, you know, opposite of that, then we're gonna say, "Hey, um, we want to basically fire the weapon." And we'll get back to this as well. And we also need one more method before we can do this. So we're gonna have a problem with this you'll see um, but basically what we need to do is we need to also look at the player but just for the sake of it let's go back and let's see so a couple things uh, we, I wanted to do in here is if you go to the weapon you can see it has a little something called can use added this new uh, variable be sure you add this it's very important so basically this is just one variable called can use and uh, it's set to true by default now if you go to the update method uh, you might notice that the shoot input and the reloading input, uh, including the aiming and everything, has been branched inside of if can use. The reason why I'm doing this is because the, the weapon itself was not made for the AI specifically when I was designing it. Pretty bad design choice, I know. Um, but yeah, basically what I'm doing is I have a variable called can use. If you cannot use it, uh, which is going to be in case of uh, AI, because the AI, because if you give the weapon to the AI, and you press the left mouse button, uh, not only will we shoot, but also the AI will shoot, because they're both mapped to the shoot input, which is simply just a click. All right. So one more issue you might have noticed is every time he shoots, he actually updates the ammo text uh, and whatnot, and we obviously don't want that to happen. We don't want it to update our, our ammo text and everything. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to encapsulate this as well. Um, can use uh, and let's go back to uh, unity here and see what we have here so 
cool. So we have your in Unity, we have uh, we have to like basically assign the weapon. So we gave the AI a weapon, which is just this guy right here. You know, just a bunch of arms. I'm gonna drag and drop this over here. Um, like this. Click the weapon. Make sure we have everything set here properly. So in the weapon, uh, we have a cam shoot point, which is basically just a shoot point here. Be sure you also copy the weapons shoot point. It could be anywhere really, uh, but as long as it's close enough, and, and yeah. And um, that is about it. Also, go here and make sure that can use is unchecked on the AI because can use is only for player. Um, and that is about it. Let's go and test it. You will see there will be some problems, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, now we're checking for the player um, is basically ignoring us right now. I think the reason why it's ignoring us is because uh, there's no way out of the patrol state, if you notice. Uh, so here we're patrolling, you know, and everything, but we don't actually care about the player at all. So that's basically a problem. Uh, what we can do here is we can essentially say, hey, uh, if the player isn't inside, then we're essentially going to switch to the follow state. So The if we are in sight and we are we'll get back to that later as well but let's see so so you can see the player is in sight but he's shooting he's shooting the wrong direction you can see and uh that's obviously not where we want him to shoot he is able to uh surprisingly you know reload he's reloading you can see and then he keeps shooting uh and yeah he just doesn't know what he's doing so now we're going to fix that real quick. Basically what we need to do is we need to make sure that it looks at the player. So for that, we're going to create a little cool little method. We're going to call that uh, look at target. So look at target, very cool little method. And basically all it's going to do is it's going to have a variable called the look direction, which is really just direction to target because we're, we're supposed to look at the, uh, the target and we already have its direction. Uh, but the reason why we're creating this again is if the target is up or down, like if, if the y-axis of the target is different, so if it's elevated or anything, then basically the AI, it will cause the AI to tilt towards him, which is not what we want. We don't want it to tilt. We only want it to rotate on one axis, and that's the y-axis. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, the direction, uh, direction's y component is going to be zero, so we're just scaling it down. And then we're going to say, hey, transform the rotation is equals quaternion dot lerp so we're gonna linearly interpolate towards the target uh and we're gonna start at our current rotation um and uh, i'm not sure if i've actually covered this one before so i'm just gonna say this is basically a method that uh, smoothly rotates us from uh, a set rotation which is the the starting rotation toward to a uh, uh, an ending rotation I, actually we've done this actually we've done this in the uh, weapon tilting so yeah so we're going to move from here to, we're also going to create another variable, I almost forgot, and that's going to be uh, quaternion look rotation. And that is going to be quaternion look rotation, uh, look direction. Uh, and <clears throat> what this is doing is basically it's converting a vector into a direction. So if you have a directional vector specifically, then it's going to create a rotation that faces it. So it's looking towards that direction, right? That's all it's doing. Um, and then we can just have it so we go from our current rotation to the look direction. Sorry, look rotation, not direction. Um, and then we simply have a time to delta time into agent dot angular speed. This is just like the rotation speed is going to be dependent on the agent, the component, you know, the administration components, angular speed. And we're smoothly rotating it by multiplying it by time delta time. Uh, and that's about it. And what we're going to do here is we're basically going to say, hey, look at the target and then fire. So if the target is inside, then look at it and fire. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and that is about it. Let's uh, let's see what we have. So now you can see he's looking at us and he's shooting, and it works. And if I if I go out of this out of his view, he follows me and then he shoots again and then again he's trying to follow me, and and looks at me and yeah, there we go. That's about it. We are basically done at this point, uh, and we got ourselves a little uh, little AI that's working. Uh, a few things I was doing wrong in the follow state, instead of using remaining distance, we're going to use direction to target dot magnitude. What this means is direction to target is essentially direction towards the target, but it also 
If you take a direction's magnitude, you basically get distance towards the target. You can also use the formula vector three dot uh, distance, but this is I'm just gonna use that. This is also apparently more optimized. I'm not sure about micro optimization, but yeah. Um, and basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, if the target is not in the shooting distance, so you know in the else range, we're gonna say if distance of target. Oh god, I'm in direction to target at magnitude is greater than max follow distance then we are essentially going to return to um, our patch rule state. So it's just going to go back to the patch rule state. Uh, and in there, in here, we're going to do a very similar thing, essentially the same exact thing. So we're going to say if the target is not in sight or the target is a little too far, um, uh, if the target is out of our shooting, disc, shooting range, then we are essentially going to return back to follow uh, state. And that's about it. Uh, let's give this a test run and see if it works. He's following me and is shooting me. If I go too far, he returns back to patrolling uh, his waypoints and is basically given up. Uh, and I can also play hide and seek with it, and it'll basically not know where I am. Oh no, it's, it's it knows it knows. Okay, still. So, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Basically saw me there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing. Great AI. Yeah, you, you guys are welcome. I'm, I'm amazing at, at coding AI, as you can tell. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's basically about it. Um, and uh, yeah, like check out my favorite account if you got some work for me, and my Patreon if you want to support me. Uh, and also, this is just for you know, giggles and whatnot, but basically I made an ePal account where you pay people to play games with you. I don't know why, but I did that. And if you guys want to do that, then please feel free. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Also, huge thanks to all my supporters. Um, Alex Quartermeyer, Zach Hamilton, and Flick. Thank you so much for supporting me. It really keeps me going. It really motivates me. And, like, I just... I'm just super excited to get my stuff done, so keep supporting, and uh, that's awesome. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Love you guys. And everyone out there as well as watching my videos. Amazing. Keep, keep going, keep developing, and see you guys in the next one. Peace out.